Greetings, saints. Greetings. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Melissa Hey, How is everyone doing? Welcome. I hope those of you joining me live, a special welcome to you. Those of you watching the replay, thank you so much for watching the replay. I'm really, really excited tonight for another episode of Kingdom Talk. We have a really, really exciting topic tonight, and we're going to be talking about the name above all names. Hallelujah. Let me get my slides up. The name that is, that is given above all names. This is such an essential topic tonight. And we're not only going to be talking about a name that is above all names, but we're also going to be breaking some bondages. We're going to stand on the rock of truth tonight. So I want to welcome everyone. Welcome, Yahusha Reigns. Welcome, Shalom to you as well. Let me just start with a really brief, brief prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this moment. We want to thank you for this day that you've guided us and kept us through. We want to thank you, O oh Father, for all those who are watching, for those who are watching the replay, that you've been with them also. You've protected and kept them, O oh Father. O oh Father, we bring all glory and honor to your holy name, the rock of all ages. We bring all glory and honor to your holy name, King of all kings, Elohim of the Shamaim of the heavens. Father, we pray right now, you who are the health of our continents, that you would lift up our continents tonight, that you would lift up the continents of our viewers wherever they would be, that you would touch their hearts and you would give them truth in their hearts, O oh Father, and lead them in the way of peace, O oh Father. We pray right now that you will send your Ruach HaKadosh, your Holy Spirit, to minister unto us, your Holy Spirit, to instruct and guide us that all be done for your glory and all be done for your honor and all be done for your holy name. We come together and we magnify your name together, O oh Father. We bless you and honor you and lift you up in the name of your son, Yahusha. Amen. Right, so we're going to talk about the name above all names. And we're just going to dive right in because, and I would just give a really brief, brief history. And we are all familiar with the story of the children of Israel the history of the children of Israel. We are all familiar of how they were no people and Yahuwah chose himself a people and he delivered them out of Egypt, out of the land of bondage with a mighty hand and he declared himself Elohim to Pharaoh and Pharaoh had no choice but to let the people go and he took them through the wilderness he, they, he parted the Red Sea. They walked on dry land. He fed them with manna. He took care of them. He brought them to his holy mountain. He gave them his commandments. He cut a covenant with them. He gave them the Torah. And he told them that he's, chose, he's choosing them to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation unto him. And they said unto him, all that you have said, we will do. All that you have said. And if any of you have ever read Exodus 19, how powerful that chapter is. Exodus 19 is one of the most, I mean, the whole book, the whole scripture. The scripture is wonderful. I love the scriptures from Genesis right through to Revelations. But Exodus 19, and I mean, we can all identify so many different parts of scriptures that we just absolutely love and it's just so powerful. But Exodus 19, when Yahuwah, when the, the, earth, when the, the, the mountain shook, the, there was smoke on the mountain, the, the shofar sounded louder and louder and louder. And all the people were down at the bottom, right? They could not break forth. And they had to wash themselves and make themselves ready for that day because they were meeting with Elohim. And he spoke to them. They heard his voice audibly for all the people, for all the charismatic leaders, false shepherds that are saying they've heard the voice of the Lord, right? For all of them that have, are saying that they've heard his voice and they're sitting there and they having so much fun talking about how he's spoken to them and he was standing in their room. The children of Israel heard the voice of Elohim, heard his voice. 
And do you know what, he, what they said to Moses? After they heard his voice, after they saw that magnificent display of his power and his majesty, and he declared himself and he spoke the commandments to them. I am Yahuwah Eloheka that has delivered you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other Elohim before me. You shall not make unto you any graven image. And he spoke all the commandments to them in power. Do you know what they said unto Moses? Moses, you know what? Don't let Yahuwah speak unto us again. We don't want to hear his voice. You speak unto us. You Go get what he says and come speak unto us. We don't want to hear his voice. Right? But he declared himself to them so that they would know him and that they would fear him and know him and know that he's Yahuwah, he's Elohim. And he gave them the commandments. He broke a covenant with them, right? He broke a covenant with them. He came down, his body as clear as heaven. He came down and they were eating and drinking. He did not eat, but he was amongst them, right? He was with them one-on-one. -on -one. They were eating and drinking, celebrating the covenant that was cut and the blood that was shed for the covenant. Then he gave them the Torah, right? And he gave them these instructions so that they would live in the way that they ought to live because he said unto them, I am making of you a holy nation, a royal priesthood. The reason I'm saying all this, the reason I went back, Stay with me. The reason I went back is because I wanted to understand that nonetheless, the children of Israel, as it has been written in scripture over and over and over again, a stiff naked nation, a stubborn people. And the children of Israel, consequently, when they went into the land, when they went into the land, the promised land flowing with milk and honey, all the preparation that was made before they went into the land, all the work that Moses and the priests did before they went into the land, the Torah that was given to them before they went into the land, the covenant that was given to them before they went in the, into the land. And even just before they went into the land, Yahuwah came again and warned them, when you go into the land, do not do as the people do. Do not follow the Elohim. Break down all the Elohim. Break down all the Asherah poles. Break it down. You shall serve Yahuwah only. When they went into the land, they forgot. And in a nutshell, they fell away and they started to worship false Elohim. And then we see in scripture where they come back right? They repent. Yahuwah delivers them. They fall again. Then they come back. They repent. And Yahuwah is gracious and he delivers them. And this has been the pattern for the children of Israel over and over and over again. And you find there came a point where the prophets, right? Ezekiel, Isaiah, and all the Jeremiah, and all the prophets, Ezra, they mourned for Zion. They mourned for Israel. They mourned, they cried out. You know, I was recently reading in the book of Baruch that used to be in the first King James. And I was reading in the book of Baruch how Baruch sat and Baruch was facing Jerusalem and, and Baruch was crying and weeping and weeping for Jerusalem and weeping for Zion and weeping because, because they're going into captivity. They've been taken into captivity. And the beautiful thing, is that we serve an Elohim who is full of grace, who is who has loving kindness and tender mercies, right? We serve an Elohim who is full of grace, who has loving kindness and tender mercies, that although the prophets, although they mourned and wept for, for Zion and wept for Jerusalem and wept for the children of Israel and their stiff nakedness, he came and he gave them prophecies of hope. And the prophecies of hope, in that prophecy of hope, we have a wonderful prophecy that has come to pass. And because of that wonderful prophecy that has come to pass, because of the grace of our Heavenly Father, that you and I today can confess that we are saved through faith and not of ourselves, that we can confess 
that we believe in his son, Yahusha HaMashiach, as our Adonai and Savior, and hence receive that gift of everlasting life because of that prophecy that has come to pass. So let us look at some of those prophecies. And we're going to be, I, I'm, there are so many I can choose, but I only chose a few. Ask you a sign of Yahuwah Eloheka. Ask it either in the depth. Now remember, Isaiah is, is weeping. Isaiah, Isaiah is, is in pain, right? Ask it in the depth. Where am I? Or in the height. But Akar said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt Yahuwah. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, but will ye weary my Elohim also? Therefore, as he is writing, Adonai himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth an infant son whose name is called Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Isaiah 7, chapter 7, verse 11 to 15. Right? So we see here, if you remember one of my favorite verses, Proverbs 30, verse 4, where it says, you know, what is his name or what is his son's name? Who can tell? His son's name was Hair. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth an infant son whose name is called Emmanuel. So mark this prophecy that the heavenly father has given unto Yahuwah, unto um, Isaiah, and Isaiah has brought it unto the people. Now let us look at another prophecy. Now gather yourself in troops. We're looking at Mika. Gather yourself in troops, O daughter of troops. He has laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Yasharel with a rod upon the cheek. But you, Bethlehem, that's Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you be little among the thousands of Yehuda, thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Yasharel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travails has brought forth then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Yasharel, and he shall stand and feed in the strength of Yahuwah, in the majesty of the name of Yahuwah Eloheyu, and they shall abide, for now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Yeshua is saying, Elohim is with us. Hallelujah, he is. But you, O Bethlehem, Though you be little among thousands of Yehuda, the small little tongue of Bethlehem, yet out of you shall come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Yasharel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. These are key prophecies that were given to the prophets. Remember, remember when Ye 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 Yahusha said unto the Jews that the prophets in the scriptures, they wrote of me. They wrote of me. Let's look at another scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15 to 19. Yahuwah Eloheka will raise up unto you a prophet from the midst of you, of your brethren, like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken, according to all that you desired of Yahuwah Eloheka in Korev, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of Yahuwah Elohei, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. Now, this is the same part I was just speaking about when they, when they heard his voice audibly, when he was giving them the commandments, Exodus chapter 19 and 20, right? And they said, let us not hear his voice again. This is Moses speaking unto them. And Yahuwah said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto you, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them, all that I shall command him, and it shall come to pass that whatsoever, whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Moses wrote of me. Remember that it's also in the scriptures. There's one who condemns you, even Moses. Moses wrote of me. I will raise unto you a prophet from the midst of you, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. 
I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto you and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And again, we have Yahusha saying all that he says, he says what he hears from his father. Hallelujah. I know I'm jumping ahead of myself. So my mouse is stuck. What we're going to do now, we're going to look at the birth now. So we've seen the prophecy and we're going to go to Matthew chapter 18. Let us go to Matthew chapter 1, sorry. Oh, can't get my mouse to be still tonight. It's going crazy everywhere. Matthew chapter 1. So now we're going to read Matthew chapter 1, but we're not going to read the whole chapter. We're going to go down to verse 18. I ask you to stick with me till the end because this is a very, very important topic that we're going to talk about tonight. Now, the birth of Yahusha Hamashiach was on this wise. When as his mother Miriam was espoused to Yosef, before they came together, she was found with child of the Ruach HaKadosh. She was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Yosef, meaning Joseph Haman, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Yahuwah appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Yosef, son of David, fear not to take unto you Miriam, your woman, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Yahusha, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of Yahuwah by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call the name of the same Emmanuel, which being interpreted is, Our El is with me. Then Yosef, being raised from the sleep, did as the angel of Yahuwah had bidden him, and took unto him his woman, and he knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Yahusha. Now, what we're going to do here is, I am going to see if I can get this KJV online. And we're going to go to Matthew. And there's a reason we're doing this. So I will have to share a new screen. So let's share on stop screen share. I'm going to share a new screen. Okay. And I'm sharing Matthew. We're getting somewhere. So now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when as his mother was espoused to Joseph before they came together and she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. There's no ghost there, right? And Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. We must not ever say that word. And she shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God is God with us. Now, Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. The reason I'm sharing this here is because now we're going to talk about a name that is above all names. This is very, very important. And I pray that the heavenly father open our eyes and give us understanding. I pray his spirit of wisdom come and I pray his spirit of truth guide us because it is important. You know, Psalm 25 says, lead us in the way of truth, right? And I love how my husband, you know, my husband was talking about this recently with the family and I love how he says it. And he says that he wants us to picture, he wants us to picture that the angel comes to Joseph and the angel says to Joseph that you're going to have a child and you're going to have a child and the child which you're going to bear, that child is going to be called a Hebrew name, which is Yahusha. But Joseph decides that he is going to call his child a different name. Definitely not. Now, the interesting thing is 
We see the name Emmanuel here has remained the same as we've just seen in Isaiah. We've seen in Isaiah where the virgin shall come for, a virgin shall have a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel. That name has remained the same. But we're going to get to the name that is above all names, right? He's called Emmanuel, but he's also called another name, a name that he came in the name of his father, which we know the scripture has said. He came in the name of his father, but something was done to remove that name and give us another name. And we're going to get to the root of that. And all I ask humbly is that we, and I'm not here to bash anyone, but I'm here to show truth because we have to understand the scriptures are the inspired word of Yahuwah. If we say we worship the heavenly father, the one who created heaven and earth, right? And we say that we believe in him who is, who is holy. We believe in him who has given us the scriptures. He has given us his, how much do we understand that his word is also holy? His word is holy. And everything that he has given to the prophets, as he has dictated and revealed to the prophets to write, is essential and ought not to be changed. Ought not to be changed. And all we need to do as disciples and followers is to seek truth. Seek and ye shall find. Let us look at another scripture. Luke chapter 2. In Luke chapter 2 verse 1 to 21. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 21, 21, 21, we see another prophecy, which we, which I highlighted at the beginning, coming to pass. And it came to pass in those days that there were out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Remember, we just read that because he was of the house and lineage of Joseph, of David, sorry, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of Yahuwah came upon them and the glory of Yahuwah shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. So we have these shepherds out at night and since it was not winter, it was not the 25th of December. The 25th of December is the birth of Tammuz. He was not born in the 25th of December. He was born in the fall right? So they were out and the angel appeared unto them, but the angel came with a great message. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, which is Christ the Lord. This is what the translators have given us. We get into that. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall be the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising Yahuwah and saying, Glory to Yahuwah in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. So you, we let us see here. This is the birth of his son that was prophesied in Isaiah, that was prophesied in Mik, Mik, Micah, Micah. I'm saying the Hebrew, that was prophesied in Deuteronomy, that was prophesied in, in Zechariah. You know, we have so many prophecies in the scriptures of the Messiah, of the right hand of his deliverance that shall come forth, right? So this birth has happened at the moment that this birth has taken place. For unto you is born this day, this day. That was the day he was born. There is praising the heavenly host, praising and saying, glory to Yahuwah the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Because salvation is now coming unto us in time, of course. But the birth has happened. Prophecy has been fulfilled. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into the heavens, the shepherds said one to one another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is to come to pass, which, which the Yahuwah have made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. 
And when they had seen it, they had made known abroad, saying, which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. And the, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising Yahuwah for all the things that they had heard and seen, and it was told unto them. And when eight days were accomplished for the circumcising of the child, his name was called Jesus, which was so named of the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So here we have the shepherds. The shepherds have left. The shepherds have gone to this child. And they have told Mary and Joseph all the things concerning this child. And she has kept those things in her heart. And they have returned and gone. And this is a, the story given as in Luke. We know Matthew has given another aspect also. So now we're looking at Luke. But they all align. They all align in the fact where this child that was prophesied, right? It was prophesied and is named. But Joseph... Do you think that Joseph would have disobeyed the word that was given to him and would have called this child by a name that is a different name than was spoken by the angel? The heavenly host praised, gave praise and glory when Yahusha was born. They gave glory and praise. Hence, it is extremely important to understand what has happened and who has now come into the world. As it is written in the law of Yahuwah, every male that openeth the womb shall be called holy to Yahuwah. So when the days of purification, when the days of her purification were over, because according to the Torah, Mary had to guard those days of her purification. So once those days were open, were finished, sorry, then they went to Jerusalem to bring the presents as they are required to do and to offer the sacrifice as they were required to do at that time. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen Yahuwah's anointed one. So we see here in Luke the fulfillment of another prophecy that was prophesied. So what we're going to do now, I'm trying to get this slide up. Now we're going to do now, we're going to look at these prophecies. So we have here in Isaiah, Adonai himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth an infant son whose surname is Emmanuel. We see in Matthew where that Emmanuel, his name was also kept in Matthew. When Yosef, he didn't want to put her away publicly, and the angel came to her and said, Fear not to take unto you, Miriam, your woman, for that which is conceived of her is of the Ruach Hakadesh. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call the name of the same Emmanuel, which has been interpreted is El with me or El with us. Now we have another fulfillment of prophecy here. We have Micah, as we said, where the child was supposed to be born in Bethlehem. And we have here in Matthew, the fulfillment of that prophecy of the child being born in Bethlehem. But however, what I want you to note is that the name Emmanuel was not changed, but the name Yahusha was changed to Jesus. And now we're going to ask ourselves why. Because Joseph was given birth to a Hebrew child. The angel came and the angel gave Joseph a Hebrew name. Emmanuel was kept because the Hebrew name is Emmanuel, as I've showed you in the Sefer, that was retained in English, Emmanuel. But his name, Yahusha, was changed completely to Joseph. And we need to ask ourselves some questions in searching for the truth. We need to ask ourselves, is it a translation, the name Jesus, or is it a transliteration? Is it truly his name? Is that truly his name, that child that was born, that child that we saw, Mary and Joseph in the manger and the shepherds who came and found the child, right? Is that, is that the name that was given to him? Should his name have been changed? And if his name was changed, as we can see, who changed his name? Why did they change his name? Hallelujah, Yahusha Ren is saying, amen, we need to search for the truth. Amen, thank you, amen. Who changed his name? And what does the Holy Father, Elohim of truth, think about changing his name? And should it matter to us saints and fellow disciples? And some, some Christians watching this are going to get very aggravated right now. 
they're going to get very aggravated because we have been given the name Jesus. But I want to say this in love, right? We have been given that name. That is the truth. If you go and do your, I'm, 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 I'm asking you to go and do your research. Go do your research and you will see it is the truth. I will not come and bring a light to you because I would be required for doing so. Re Elohim would require it of me to bring a light to you. We were given the name Jesus. So don't go on the defensive. If we have the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit abiding in us, you don't go on the defensive. We submit to truth and let the spirit of truth guide us and lead us. And then once we're through, you go and do your own research. And you will see that we were given a name. Was his name a translation? Like we have Abraham, Abraham, Sarah, Sarah. Um, what can I think of? Daniel, Daniel. Even his name, Emmanuel in Hebrew. Emmanuel. It has been retained. So is it truly his name? Should it have been changed if he has given a name that is above all names? Should it have been changed? And what does the father think of that? And I want to show this to you, saints. I want you to look at this. And this one, I credit to my husband who brought this to the family. Moreover, Yahuwah said unto me, take you a great role and write in it with a man's pen concerning Maha Shalal. Kashbaz, and I'm reading the, his restored name. This is his Hebrew name. And I took unto me faithful witness to record Uriahu the priest and Zachariah, Zachariah the son of Yevarek, Yahu. And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived and bore a son. Then said Yahuwah unto me, Call his name Mahe Shal Shalal Kashbaz, for before the child shall have knowledge to cry. My father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Shemaron shall be taken away before the king of Ashu. So we have here, this is Isaiah. And the heavenly father is telling Isaiah he's going to have a son. Now Isaiah's wife was a prophetess and he went in unto his wife and she conceived a son. And the son's Hebrew name is Maher Shalal Kashbaz. And his son, and the son is given that name because remember, Names in Hebrew, when someone is given a name in Hebrew by the Heavenly Father, it's absolutely essential. When Abraham's name was changed from Avram, Hebrew name, Abram, they kept that, to Abraham, English name, Abraham. Why saints? When Sarai, her name was changed to Sarah, they kept that. It was also changed to Sarah in English, right? When names are changed, Israel, his name was changed to Jacob. When names are changed or when names are given in the Hebrew culture, it is absolutely essential to the father. I want you to get this. I want you to understand that I will not come unto you and bring lies unto you. I want you to go and search yourself for the truth. According to Yahushua Reigns, we need to search for truth. It's not about bashing. The, I'm not here to bash religion, bash denomination, or bash anyone. It's about understanding what we have inherited. And it's out there. It's not hidden. Right now, it's currently not hidden. So what I want you to see is that Isaiah was, the heavenly father is saying to Isaiah, he's going to have a son, and the son's name shall be called Maher Shalal Kashbaz. Look at this, saints. Look at this. If you don't see this, then I pray that the Heavenly Father can help you to see this. In English, such a long name. Read from verse 1 in the KJV. Moreover, Yahuwah said unto me, Take thee a great rule and write in it with a man's pen concerning Maher Shalal Hashbaz. The name was retained, and I took unto me a faithful witness to record Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Zebarachiah. And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived and bare a son. Then said Yahuwah to me, Call his name Maher Shalal Hashbaz. Let us look at the Amplified. Let's see if you can see the Amplified version. 
I'm getting somewhere and I want you to stick with me to the end because tonight we are talking about the name above all names. We are going into the name that is above all names. I'm trying to present my other screen. So, now let's look at the Amplified. Then said Yahuwah unto me, take a large tablet of wood, metal or stone, and write upon it with a graving tool and in ordinary characters, which the humblest man can read, belonging to Maher Shalal Hashbaz. They, the Assyrians, hasten to the spoil of Syria and Israel, they speed to the prey. And I took faithful witness to record and attest this prophecy for me. Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Zebarachia, and I approached my wife the prophetess, and when she had conceived and born a son, Yahuwah said to me, call his name Maher Shalal Hashbaz, as a continual reminder of the, to the people of the prophecy. As a continual reminder of the people to the prophecy. I want you to engage in some critical thinking with me. And the critical thinking I want you to engage in is the name above all name was changed. But why wasn't this name changed? Hasatan, Satan's name is the same in the scriptures, in Hebrew, and in English. We have all these other English names, Avraham, Daniel, and I can go through a long list that had the same, even Zechariah, Zechariah who? right? Even these names are the same. Why was the name that is above all names change? So this is what we're going to do now. And we're going to listen to a short clip. Hey, this is Lou again. Thanks to all the subscribers that have been and this is taken from Lou White. You know, you can get this, uh, just touch this little button down here. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's an octopus. It's not real. Anyway, you can hit the subscribe button, and then this little thing will go. And you can just hit subscribe, and it's done. <laughs> Thanks for doing that, all of you. All. Now, let's see. Um, I wanted to ask you if you realize something. The name of this video is kind of oh, confrontational, maybe, but I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about words that we've inherited from our fathers. And, and that's what we have to understand, saints. I want you to understand we're not attacking people. You're not attacking anyone. We have inherited something because certain people did deliberate work, as I've shown you. Maher Shalal Hasbaz was kept the same way in English. But there is one name, two names rather, the father's name and the name of his son that was messed with. And this is not, this is out there. The research is there. And they've even said it in their preface, as I read for you last week. If any of you missed last week's video, should the father's name have, should we um, know and say the creator's divine name? I read for you the preface. Their own preface says, that they have changed it and we've rendered it as. We have adopted a device and rendered it as. Okay? They've given them their own name and titles. Yahu or Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 19 says that we've inherited nothing but lies and falsehood and things that are not profitable from our fathers. The Gentiles will be coming from the nation saying that. But... Uh, you know, the name J-E-S-U-S is a false name. It's not real. It was invented. Well, words were made up I mean, by people, but the name J-E-S-U-S is not even 500 years old. It's not based on a true name. It's actually based on a fake name that was already a substitution called uh, a Christogram, which we talked about in one of the videos recently, and it, that I-E-S V that's found in the Latin Vulgate, which uh, we inherited, was adopted and changed a little bit. And in the 17th century, the name J-E-S-U-S, which was really written I-E-S-U-S -S, for the first time in the 17th century. 
These are these are not meant to attack people, but to expose the truth. You know, expose lies and reveal the truth. The name is it is the name of our Mashiach. Is it Greek or Latin, or is it English or is it Hebrew? Well, let's find out. Uh, from what ancient manuscript can anyone prove the fake name J-E-S-U-S is real? It's not to embarrass teachers, and I'm even saying this. It's to make the point that it's impossible to prove something that's false based on the lack of evidence. You can't prove that something's true when you don't have any evidence for it. But you can't say it's a lie either. All you can say is, well, I don't know where that came from. It just comes flying out of there. We don't have any real evidence for it. So why do we see it in the scriptures of most translations of Yahuwah's word? L-O-R-D, Dominus, Kyrios, Adonai, and J-E-S-U-S. What's going on? Well, L-O-R-D was a replacement term in the King James Version. And they got that because of the meaning of the Latin Vulgate, which they were translating directly from. The King James Version is an Anglican Catholic translation based on the Latin Vulgate. You can just read the Latin Vulgate directly and you can see the direct connection. IESV was written in, the, in place of the name in the Latin Vulgate. And the Latin Vulgate was a 1,200-year-old translation that was done by a fellow named Eusebius, Sophronius, and they call him Jerome. You can look that up in 391 to 403 CE. So anyway, to assume the Sanhedrin was out to kill people because they were saying a Greek word, that's, not, that's madness. There's no way. I mean, why would they do that? They're, they were attacking Yahushua and his Nazarene because they were saying a name they had forbidden. It was a Hebrew word, and it was the name of the Creator. And when you get these saints, the scriptures comes alive with deeper understanding. When you come to understand why, why they hated him and why they wanted to crucify him. Yes, for some of the things that he has said, but also remember we read in John 17 where he himself has said, Yahusha himself said, I have declared your name and will declare it. He came in the name of his father. And it was a name according to the Jewish culture that they, their history, that is something that they made up. They weren't asked to do that by the scriptures, by the Torah. They decided that he, he, they forbade people because of the ineffable name doctrine. They forbid people from saying the creator's divine name. So this gig, when you have that understanding, you can now understand what was really taking place during that time which Yahushua was coming in the name of, Yahua. It's four vowels. What is a vowel? A vowel is something that doesn't involve the teeth and the lips or the tongue on the roof of the mouth or the lips themselves or the guttural sounds that we make when we go g. doesn't involve any of those. Those are all consonants. A vowel is something that just uses the shape of the mouth, Yahua. There's no teeth, no tongue, no stops. It's all vowels. It's four vowels. Tetra, grammaton, means four letters in Greek. Tetra means four. Tetra chord, I remember from teaching music, means the four notes. You know, the, the, the chord of notes that form the two parts of the scale. Tetra. And then, the, you know. That's just the Greek word, I'm be afraid of. But the name of the Creator is far more important, and we need to pay attention. Uh, but why would the Sanhedrin go out there <laughs> and attack people and take them, arrest them, and then stone them to death because they said a Greek word? They don't. They wouldn't. It's impossible. True. That's not it's what impossible. happened. The footnotes of the NIV. Let's think about that. The footnotes define this term that they print in the text called J-E-S-U-S. They define it as Lord is salvation in 
maybe in italics or parentheses. And they they claim that's the meaning of the name J-E-S-U-S. -S. Really? And yet, they had to know that the real name is Yahusha, based upon the definition that we find even in concordances that say that the name is based upon Yehoshua. It's really Yahusha. But they say it's based upon that, that's why they say that his name is the Lord of Salvation. You know, that's what it means. But J E S U S has no such meaning. It didn't exist at, at any point until the seventeenth century. century. They had to look at the Hebrew because the NIV and the NASB and all the other popular tr English translations, including the King James Version, if you read the preface, you're going to see. Oh, my light is gone. Yes, U.S. is defined as Lord is salvation. Well, Lord was a replacement term for our translation of Dominus. And that is his name. Dominus is my shepherd? No way. His name is Yahuwah. That's his name. Yahshua Yahu 42, verse 8. And I'm going to read this preface of the NASB here in a minute to show you that they know this. Now, one has to refer to... So you see the Christogram here, right? It's just a combination of letters. So this is Greek. It was a combination of letters that they put together to make the name for Jesus Christ. It was not his name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Yahushua already saying Lord is a title. The same thing as well. Lord is a title. It's not his name. Saints, this is, this is not a light matter. And I pray it's only the Heavenly Father can open our eyes and give us understanding. It's not, it's not any of us how wise we are or how smart we are. It's only to whom he wants to give the understanding, he will give the understanding. But it is not a light matter because we have inherited this. This was given to us, right? This was given to us. To the Hebrew to discover the real meaning. And they knew this name did not mean they knew that they were working with a thought Hebrew. I just had to have that one more time. So the Greek I E S U S O U S, which I I in that time was yeah, but seventeen hundred years old, the Latin I E S V again it's a Christogram. So they put these combinations together. It's not even his name, it's not a translation, nor is it a transliteration. Right, remember, we went through that last week. If you missed the name of the creator video, fantastic video it was. I went through that last week. Right, so a translation it gives you the meaning of a word. So, shalom means peace, but shalom in his in Hebrew, if I say shalom in English, I am actually pronouncing it's written in a way where I can pronounce have the same pronunciation of the word. That's a transliteration, right? So, his name. The name that they have given us in Greek, right, 1,700 years ago. And that name was then passed down to Latin. Remember, we have the Latin Vulgate. And then we have all those translations, Bible translations that came off of the Latin Vulgate and other, other translations, right? They, the Latin Vulgate got that from the Greek, the Septuagint. And then Jesus in the 17th century, that again was... They change it around IESEV and then they give us the word now G J E S U S the Christogram. Discover the real meaning, and they knew this name did not mean they knew that they were working with a false name. <clears throat> if you surrender to the truth, then be set free from all the devices and schemes, and it's going kind to of cost you. But to know his name is very precious. Uh, it is precious. It is his name. How can it not the be? The proper name of G-O-D in the Old Testament. Well, that phrase right there comes from the NASB, the New American Standard Babel. The principles of translation. Okay. They say this in the beginning. The proper name of G-O-D uh, in the Old Testament. What, what Old Testament? They mean the... Uh, the Old Covenant, but that's not the writings from Genesis to Malachi, like we discussed. 
Anyway, they've got all kinds of mind-boggling errors there. In the scriptures, the name of G-O-D... Because remember, there are errors also where they've just put everything under the Old Testament to give everybody a, a certain concept. There's a reason that they've put all these books and call them Old Testament. But remember, you have the prophets, you have the Torah, you have the writings. That's what it was. You know, this is the NASB, I'm quoting. In the scriptures, the name of G-O-D is most significant, and understandably so. It is inconceivable to think of spiritual matters without a proper designation for the supreme deity. Thus, the most common name for deity, that's not a name, they used the wrong word there, it should be the proper, the, the, the term for deity is Elohim. They use the E, E-L-O-I-M. The Electric Light Orchestra. No, it's not E. That's more than Hebrew. It's Hebrew a -A. E, which is A, ancient Hebrew. Proper Hebrew is A. The normal -A. word for master is L-O-R-D. In English, yeah. The normal word for master is Lord, a rendering of Adonai. There is yet another name. Well, they're using the word name pre oh, And this is their here. preface, saints. It's written in the preface. I read for you and I preface. Which is particularly assigned to G-O-D as a special or proper name. That is the four letters Y-H-W-H. Of course, there's no W. It's a double U. It's really a, just a U. Y-H-U-H is what they should have printed. And this is, and they give the reference of Exodus 3, verse 14, and Yahshiyahu, they call him Isaiah, 42, verse 8. I am Yahuwah. I am Yahuwah. That is my name. That is my name. That's what that verse says. This name has not been pronounced by the Jews because of a reverence for the great and sacredness of the divine name. Therefore, it was consistently pronounced and translated L O R D. Therefore, he's reading the preface. Uh, what about his real name? They just quoted the verse where it came from. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it was consistently pronounced and translated L O R D. The only exception to this translation of Y H W H is when it occurs in immediate proximity to the word Lord. That is, I deny. In that case, it is regularly translated G-O-D in order to avoid confusion. Oh, we're trying to avoid confusion. I see. Our teachers are leading us into confusion. Are you seeing these things? They are making decisions. They have translated, and I love the scriptures. I continue to read my scriptures. I love the Heavenly Father, and I love his son, Yahusha HaMashiach. I am a disciple and a follower of his son. Hallelujah. I serve in the kingdom of Elohim, in the kingdom of light. But it's important to understand that they, the translators, have done a work, a meddling. So they have decided to do certain things. Why? They're saying to avoid confusion. Where's the confusion? Let's say that again. In order to avoid confusion. Oh. We're trying to avoid confusion. He's reading their preface. Our teachers are leading us into confusion. Well, let's look at the NIV preface. The NIV we read last week, if you remember. Right. Try this of it. glasses on. In regard to the divine name, YHWH, commonly referred to as the Tetragrammaton, four letters, the translators adopted the device used in most. English versions device. We read that last week, yes. Of rendering that name as L O R D in capital letters to distinguish it from Adonai, another Hebrew word rendered Lord, for which small letters are used. <laughs> That's not a bit confusing. Continuing. Whenever the two names stand together in the Old Testament, as a compound name of G-O-D, they are rendered Sovereign Lord. Okay, just, they took his name out. They admitted it. They wanted, Brenda, 
He give you an excuse. Remember last week we looked for the meaning of render. Render means to make or become. Remember what we also said? They said they've adopted a device. What is the meaning of device? Remember what I said, what the meaning of device is, right? The, to, 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 a trick or a plan with an aim. So they've adopted a device. They made a plan with a certain objective. And they choose, they made the decision and chose to render his name as whatever they give it. That's not good. Well, anyway, read the, read your NIV preface and the NASB preface and see what you can make of that. See if you're not more confused than ever. Anyway, J E S U S is a false name. His name is Yahusha. So let's just go with it. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Lou White, for that. Yes, and that is the truth. The truth is when the angel came to Joseph and Mary, the angel did not say to Joseph, behold, you are going to be with child of the Ruach HaKodesh of the Holy Spirit, and you're going to have a son, and you are going to call his name J-E-S-U-S. -S. No. The angel came to, say, to him and gave him a Hebrew name. And that name is the name that is above all names. He came in the name of his father. We have inherited lies. And it's written in the scripture. Jeremiah, oh, you who are my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. The other nations shall come unto you from the ends of the earth and shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity and things wherein there is no profit. We have inherited lies. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. I've inherited it too. It's not my 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 husband's fault. He inherited he inherited it as well. We've all inherited lies. We brought into the Christian faith, right? But that Christian faith, we've we've come into the Christian faith. But it's important to understand, Yahuwah, who is the Elohim of truth, will lead us in the way of truth. So eventually, His people, He say, my people. And my people in Isaiah 52 shall know my name. Eventually, when he is ready, he will lead his people. It doesn't just, you didn't just come into the doorway where you've accepted Yahusha Mashiach as your Adonai and Savior and you've come into that doorway and then that's it. No, it's a journey with him and it breaks down um, any false rock upon which we stand, Right? But it should, it's not even rock. He breaks the shaky ground that we're standing on and he demolishes any false doctrine and he demolishes any lies, you know, and he gets rid of all of that when we serve him in spirit and in truth and he leads us and brings us into the way of truth. That is what he does because he is the Elohim of truth. And we should care. We should care about that. Because we have received everlasting life through his son. We should care about that. We should care about what they've done. And we should care about honoring and reverencing him by his holy name. For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his yakid, meaning his beloved, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And this is the record that Elohim has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He that has the son has life. And he that has not the son of Elohim has not life. If you do not have the son of Elohim, you will be condemned. You are condemned and you will go into damnation. You will see death. You will end up in the lake of fire as long as you do not have his son. These things have I written unto you that you believe on the name of the son of Elohim. Why did they change his name? If his name is the name that we have to believe upon, why did they have to meddle? Why was the name of Satan not changed? Why was it not changed? Why was the name of, what was the long name we read? Mahel Halal Hashbaj. Why was that not changed? But why the name that is given above all names, why was it changed? That he, that he may know that he have eternal life and that he may believe. Hallelujah. Thank you. That's true. 
that as sin has reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Yahusha HaMashiach, our Adonai. Yahusha, our Messiah, our Adonai. Right? We have received everlasting life through his son. He sent his son unto us. He gave his son a name. He, the heavenly father, gave his son a name. A name that came in his name. A name that is above all names. If you still think it's a light matter, then pray. Seek him. Seek guidance. Seek his guidance because the research is out there. When it was translated, when the Hebrew scriptures, remember our heavenly father spoke Hebrew, the scriptures were written in Hebrew. No matter how much people want to have the English language as if it's something so amazing and it's the language of the world, they've made it that way. The heavenly father doesn't care about that. He cares about truth. He cares about truth. He's the Elohim of truth. The scriptures were given in Hebrew. The names were given in Hebrew and the name matter. If the names didn't matter, then he would not have named his son. If the name didn't matter, he would not have changed Abraham's name. If the name didn't matter, he would not have changed Israel's name. If the name didn't matter, he would not have changed Sarah's name. If the name didn't matter, he would not say, my people shall know my name. If the name didn't matter, he wouldn't say in Isaiah 42, 8, I am Yahuwah, that is my name. If the name didn't matter, the Hebrew name was taken and it was not translated where we have the meaning. It was not transliterated where, we, where we're given the exact same pronunciation in our language so we can say the name, but it was a Christogram was put together. A Christogram, a monogram, a combination of letters were put together by the Greeks that was put together in the 1700. And then we have the Latin, when the Latin Vulgate came about, they took that Christogram that was put together by the Greeks and then they made another Christogram. So the Latin, the Greeks had IE. I can't remember if it's I-E-S-U-S, I-E-O-S-U-S, and the Latin has I-E-S-V. Forgive me if I have it wrong, but you could go research it. It's out there. It doesn't matter how right I have it. It's out there. And then the Latin had that I-E-S-V, and then years later in the 17th century, the Romans decide, well, you know what? We're just going to give this name now. We're going to call him J-E-S-U-S. It is not his real name. It is not a transliteration. It's not a translation. Because this person whom they have decided to change his name, this individual whom was born, conceived by the Holy Spirit, walked upon the earth, died for your sins and my sins, resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your question, my dear sister. Yes, yes, actually it is, my darling. It is a, a name, if you missed the video that I just shared, you can go back and watch it. It was made up. It's not his translation. It's not a transliteration. It was actually made up. And, and hence the Catholic Church, have established J-E-S-U-S -S as the standard name and subsequently who will go against the Holy Mother Church as they call it, the Mother Church. Subsequently, what was done is that all the other languages now would of course put that name in the different languages, J-E-S-U-S. -S. But his name was Yahusha. He came in the name of his father. Uh, I will share another short video I have, not today, but I will share another video that shows the Hebrew the father's name written in Hebrew and his name also written in Hebrew with one letter or two letters, I think, at the end. And you see the exact name of his father at the beginning, Yahuwah, Yahusha. I'm not making it up. So as, as the research, the research is out there, when the Hebrew scriptures were translated, the Greek, when the Greek Septuagint was written, they instead, what they did is, 
instead of putting his name, they put a Christogram, right? It's a combination of letters. They put a combination of letters for his name. And then the Latin now, when the Latin Vulgate was written, they just follow that pattern and put a combination of letters because they were all abiding by something called the ineffable name doctrine. And I'm going to do another video another time on that ineffable name doctrine because all Christians are following the ineffable name doctrine without knowing it. But we're not doing it out of hatred. No, we have inherited this. This is something we have innocently inherited because of man's meddling. It's out there. And as I read in the preface, the preface, the NIV preface, the NASB preface said that they did it. They said for the name YHUH, which they have as W, but it's really a U. But the YHWH, which is the tetragrammaton for his name, they have rendered it as render means to make or become. We have made it. L O R D. We have made it G O D. We have made his um for Jesus. We have given him the name Jesus. His name means they give it a meaning. Now they had to know the Hebrew name in order to say Jesus means your salvation because in Hebrew his name Yahusha means I am your deliverer. So they knew his the meaning of his name in Hebrew in order to assign the name that they made up in English, right? That they made up in English in order to assign the meaning to that name. And the name Jesus only came about in the 1700s. So we have to ask ourselves, what was he really called? If that name came about in the 1700s, what was he called? It's a new name. When the angel appeared unto Joseph, he gave him a Hebrew name. And my point is, if it's the name that is above all names, the name of Satan wasn't changed. In Hebrew, it's Hasasa, Hasatan, still Satan. Hasatan meaning the, the Satan, right? Still Satan. Abraham, still Abraham. I shared a scripture in Isaiah when Isaiah, and you can go read it. If any of you just joining me live in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 1 to 4. When, when Yahuwah was prophesying, gave Isaiah a prophecy and said to him, you shall have a son and you shall call his son Maher Shalal Hashbaz. The same name was kept in English. You go into your English Bibles right now. Go to Isaiah chapter 8. That same long, my husband who revealed that to us, that same long name was kept in English. Then why was the name above all name messed with? He does answer, my dear sister. That's an excellent question. I love your questions. Does Father God answer when we pray in Jesus' name? You know why he answers? You, you want to know why he answers? Because he knows that we have inherited lies. And that is why, you remember, our walk with the Heavenly Father is a journey. And that's why we must never think we just reach, oh, I found it. I have the truth, I'm here, and that's it. Because we will be surprised to see that some of the things that we thought were the truth or some of the things we thought we had. So he knows that we pray, who is the Elohim of the heaven? It's him. They've given him a name, God. But does that mean because they give him that name, God, that he likes it? No, it doesn't mean that. Because if we understand who we serve, we know he'll not stand for it. He said, my people shall know my name. Why we know him, he'll not stand for it is because the scripture tells us his people shall know his name. So when we pray to him, he knows we're praying to him and he will have mercy because he's gracious and merciful, but he knows our heart. And when our heart is truly for seeking him, he then comes in his own way. Whether it's through me today, as somebody came and revealed it to our family, whether it's through someone else, whether it's through my husband got it by a revelation. It's just so amazing. I said to him, you need to share this because my husband got the name long before us. He, when he goes to work, he listens to the Hebrew scriptures and um, to the, to the scriptures, the, the, um, he plays the scriptures on his headphones when he goes to work and he was sharing this beautiful testimony. And he said, one day he was listening to it. And the name was whispered into his spirit, Yahuwah. Because, and I, I asked him, but how? And he said, and then it was like, it was the scriptures, but that, that name just came louder. It was actually revealed to him. And then, 
And that was long before it ever came to us. And why am I saying this is that, remember, men have meddled. The translators did it. Not the, the translators did a work. Just like Christianity has been hijacked and what Christianity now is not what the father intends for his people to be as. But we come through the doorway of Christianity. A lot of us, I did. I came through the doorway of the charismatic church. I got saved watching TBN. Would I advise anybody to watch TBN today? No, I didn't know better then. When I was, how old was I when I got saved with my husband? I think I was 21. I was 21 years old. We used to watch TBN together. And one day they said, say the salvation prayer. And would I ask, advise anybody to do it that way now? No, but I didn't know better. You know, I didn't know better. His spirit of truth, because remember, none comes to the father. None comes, none comes to Yahusha, except the father draw him. And that was the time for the father to draw me and my husband together. And watching TBN, we came through that door. But would I advise somebody to watch TBN now that I know the truth? No, because TBN has a lot of false teachers that are leading people away and setting their minds on the things of the world and setting their minds on serving mammon. I want my money now and, you know, and, and, and lots of other false, false doctrines. So he's gracious. So he knows that we come through the doorway of Christianity. But that is why the scripture says, you shall love the father with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. And when you try to walk that way, to love the Father with all of your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, and you try, I know for a fact, I can say this, he will piece by piece reveal different truths to you, piece by piece. And at this hour, is an hour where are many, many Christians around the world. I'm watching the comments on YouTube. There are many Christians around the world now waking up to this, that we have inherited lies, that actually it's not the Father's name. And the research is there. It's not made up. It's not some people, some people who are trying to push people away from this are putting people who believe this as a cult or sacred namers. All that is a plan of the enemy so that people would not. Because remember, who benefits? Who benefits? I heard someone say this once. I can't remember if it's Dr. Stephen Pigeon. I can't remember, but it wasn't myself. Who benefits the most when the father's name, his actual name is not said? And who benefits the most when the name of his son that he said he has given a name above all names is not said? Who benefits the most? The enemy. He benefits the most with people being in ignorance and not knowing. He benefits, but the father is gracious, hallelujah. He's an Elohim that is gracious. So even if he knows what we've inherited, he knows that we didn't know and in ignorance, we pray to him and we call him by the title that they tell us to use. But you know what? Because he says in Isaiah 42, in Isaiah 52, my people shall know my name there will be a time for you, for me, for all those who are seeking him and want truth where he will reveal his name unto them. There will be a time. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. We are privileged to receive his, the, this word for the renewing of our minds and be kind messages to bring light truth of to people. Thank you for that, for saying that. Thank you for that, because the honor is to him. The honor is to him. And the reason I'm saying this, I'm, I have one slide left. The reason after this slide, the reason I'm saying this, who is Yahusha? And that is why I take it so seriously and why every saint, when the truth has come to you, go and pray. That's all I'm asking. Go pray. And I know the Father in his time will reveal it. Start, start once a day saying he's the name of his son in your prayer so that you could get accustomed because who is Yahusha? We have received everlasting life through his death and resurrection. He was made high priest after and is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek that was prophesied from in the book of Psalms. You can read it in Psalm 110. He's our intercessor and our mediator. We can read about it in Hebrew. He's mediating for us in the heavens right now. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. 
All power and authority has been given to him. The father has passed all authority, all power onto him. And even all judgment is given unto him. He will be the one who is judging on that great and terrible day. This is Yahusha. This is his son. So if Maher Shalal Hashbaz, his name was not changed, Isaiah's son, read about it in Isaiah 8. If the enemy's name was not changed, and Abraham and Daniel and Sarah and all those other names you can read about was not changed, why is the name of the, that is the name above all names, who has received all this honor, has been changed? Let us act, submit to the truth. This is my last slide that I will read. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, thank you, Father, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, Elohim also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Since the scripture alone should open our eyes. Because the NIV preface that I read last week, they said it clearly, we have rendered the name as the NASB that he just read in Lou White's video is written in the preface. You go, you do your research and you would see a Christogram was written. A Christogram is a monogram or combination of letters, right? A Christogram was written to give us that name. A Christogram is a monogram or combination of letters that forms an abbreviation for the name of Jesus Christ. So where his name was ever was written in the Hebrew scriptures, scriptures, the Greeks decided to put a Christogram instead and not use his name. I e I can't remember if it's I E S O U S or I E O U S. I can't remember how it's written. Forgive me, but it's in the video that we, I just played, and the Latin carried on with that Christogram, and then in the seventeen hundred they gave a name Jesus. They gave a name because of the ineffable name doctrine, where the Jews made their own rule. It was their own rule that the Father's name is too holy to pronounce. That was their own rule. So they forbid the people to pronounce his name, despite what was written in the scriptures. And it's important to remember that those Jews also, they went astray. They went astray and they worship other Elohims and they replaced his name for B-A-A-L. You can read it in the scriptures yourself. So let me finish with my last slide. Wherefore Elohim has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Yahusha every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Yahuwah is Yahusha HaMashiach to the glory of Elohim the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but no more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is Elohim which works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that he may be blameless and harmless, the sons of Elohim without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom he shall shine as lights in the world. In the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. He was given a name which is above every name. So yes, as my dear sister has asked a very good question, people come through Christianity, people come through the, that name, but that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that it is right. It, it is not the truth. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, and the Heavenly Father will lead his people to truth. And his people will accept his name and say his name and declare his name. As Yahusha himself said in John 17, I have, your, I have manifested your name unto them. I have declared your name unto them and will declare it. His name is not a light thing. So I pray in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach that he will touch the hearts of all those who shall hear this video, all those who shall watch the recording, that they will go and do their research and humble before the Father, that they will not put denomination before truth, that they will not put tradition before truth, 
that they would not put their comfort zone is what I've always known before truth, that they would stand in the way of truth. Psalm 25. Let me see if I can pull that up real quick. There's a, a verse in Psalm 25 that I love. Lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the Elohim of my Yeshua. Lead me in your truth and teach me. I pray that he would lead you in his truth. I pray that you all be blessed today. It's some Christians are going to get very agitated because of tradition. That's all. They're really agitated because of tradition, not because it's a lie, because it's all there. The truth is there, but it's what we've inherited, right? So they're going to get agitated rather than just go and pray. Go pray. I mean, what do you prefer? Do you prefer standing on the rock of truth or do you prefer standing on the rock that man has given you? And yes, the Heavenly Father has used the doorway of Christianity. But does he approve of what Christianity is today? No, he doesn't. He has used the doorway of Christianity to save my soul. To, to, to not save my soul, I should say, but for me to hear the news. To hear the news, as I said, I heard it on TBN. But does he approve of what they're doing? Does he approve of the false doctrines that they're teaching? No. He can use what he wants. He's the Heavenly Father. He can use who he wants. When the man was in the, the desert reading the scriptures, and I can't remember if it's Philip, when the Heavenly Father took Philip, and he asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And he's like, no, I need someone to explain to me. And he, he revealed to him the scriptures, and he baptized him right there. The Heavenly Father took him from wherever he was and sent him to him. He would use who he was. He is Elohim over all the earth. He uses who he was. He wants what he wants. That is his doing. But it is important that I submit to you. It is important for us day by day to understand the Elohim that we serve, to understand the son that he has given us who is exalted right now and sits at the right hand of the father. The son did not change his name and the father did not change his son's name. Men did it. So don't get aggravated when the truth is presented. Don't hold on to your tradition. Go to him in prayer and say, Father, reveal this to me. Men did it. The heavenly father did not change his name or his son's name. He didn't do it. Men did it. Why did they do it? As it's written in the NASB preface, we wanted to prevent confusion. Go read it yourself. Confusion. I pray that you would, you would humble yourself to the Heavenly Father. Meditate upon him. Meditate upon him. He has given us his son, his only begotten son, who died for our sins, who resurrected, who was obedient unto death obedient unto death. And if it wasn't for that obedience today, you and I and everyone else who believe on him would be condemned, would be condemned. And he sitteth upon the right-hand side of the Father. He is ordered high priest after the order of Melchizedek, anointed high priest after the order of Melchizedek. All judgment is given to him. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. One question we need to ask ourselves is the name that was given to us by man, the truth. Will he not use that name because that's what the Roman Catholic Church has spread and made available from the 1700s? He uses whatever he wants. I cannot speak for him. I would not. But I can only speak for the truth that's written in the scriptures. As it is written in the scriptures. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And those, that's why he said, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Ask and it shall be given unto you. You ask for him to show you the truth. He will reveal truth. You seek for the truth. He will reveal truth. Those that are truly seeking him, those that are truly seeking him, will not stay the same place that they were when we just accepted Yahushua as all or Adonai and Savior. We don't stay that same place. How I was 21 when I was 21 and I was saved watching TBN. Am I the same person then? No, he has taken me on a journey of truth. Understand who we serve. And understand that we live in a fallen world. What did we just read in the scripture? A crooked and perverse nation. We just read in the scripture in Philippians chapter 2. A fallen world, a crooked and perverse nation. And we have an enemy. 
And the enemy doesn't want us knowing the Father's holy name. He doesn't want us knowing the name of his son that is given the name above all names as it is written in the scriptures. He's given a name which is above every name. So let me close here or else I won't stop. And I want to close with this last, this, this, this slide that I had. Is it truly his name? Should his name have been changed? Should it matter to us saints and fellow disciples? Let us be critical thinkers. I don't think his name should have been changed, but it was. What would I do if, done, if, if it's presented to me now? I prayed about it. My family, we prayed about it. And the research is clear. It's really clear. The research is really clear when you start researching. It's really, really clear. And the only time when you I, you not submit to the research is because you want to hold to your tradition and you've been taught a certain thing by man. You've taught to, okay, the King James is holy. The scriptures are holy. King James was a man. The translators, the scriptures are holy. The translators did a the work. They did a the work. They, they gave us the scriptures, yes, but certain just little fingerprints, if you remember my videos from three weeks ago. Just little fingerprints of certain essential things. But glory to the Holy Father. I magnify his holy name right now. He said, my people shall know my name. He said in Isaiah 42, 8, I am Yahuwah. If you have the KJV, you won't get it. But I am Yahuwah, that is my name. I bless his name. I end this broadcast declaring the name of Yahuwah. The name that is above all name, declaring the name of Yahuwah. Husha, his son whom he has given us, for whom we have everlasting life. And I pray that his peace will be with all who shall watch this video and that he shall lead you to truth in humility. I thank you for watching. I thank you for staying with me. Be blessed. Bye for now.